When I heard the news that uh, they have lost, the, Channel 2 has lost the lawsuit, I knew it was the beginning of the end, that uh, the syndicated package that provided the fodder that a home-produced program needed, like Creature Features, was going to come to an end. That the day was, and I could also see the growth of, of cable television into wow. the 80s. Uh, even actually, cable television, even in the late 70s, was slowly becoming, uh, starting to dominate the television landscape. Uh, the first movie channel, although they only showed movies during certain hours, not 24 hours, I could, and they'd repeat the same movies over and over. I could foresee the day when you would have a movie channel 24 hours a day with different movies one after the other for weeks, months, years without ever duplicating the same the same movie. That would be possible. And look at what we have today. Wow. It all, it all uh, Priscilla, it all came true. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that is amazing. Now, so many guests. You, you were you were so so fortunate to interview so many people. Um, did anybody in particular get you so starstruck that they got you nervous to Some interview? Some of the beautiful girls that came <laughs> over. Uh, Mamie Van Doren. Yes, I was starstruck. Uh, mm -hmm. Edie Williams. I'm kind of kidding you. Uh, <laughs> now, when you're doing a television show, uh, it's serious business. You want to have you want the the viewer to think that you're having fun. But behind the scenes, you're really working very hard to make it as professional as, as you can. Um, but I must tell you, there, there, there have been some moments in my career, so, uh, interviewing celebrities, uh, where I have been starstruck. I remember the time, and this wasn't on television, but I was in L.A. Uh, covering a new uh, Harrison Ford movie. And I was told that I was going to interview Harrison Ford one-on-one -on -one in his hotel room and just go up to a certain room number, knock on the door, and he'll be waiting for you. So I, I got up to the room, I knocked on the door, and the door opened, and I froze up for a moment, because all I could think of was, oh my God, it's Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got over that moment, that shock, and went on and did, uh, did the interview. Uh, there, there are moments when uh, things would go wrong. I remember uh, Christopher Lee was late in arriving at the uh, TV station, so I hadn't been able to brief him on what we were going to do. And when he walked in uh, to the uh, studio, my wife brought him in. She served as my producer in those days. Uh, the show was in progress, and we were doing a little tomfoolery. And I guess he decided this wasn't quite what he thought the show was going to be. So he turned around to walk out the door. And he suddenly stopped because on a monitor above the door, my tape had just started of an interview with Ray Bradbury. I was over actually doing the segment, and the Ray Bradbury was part of the segment. So he stopped to watch the interview because he knew Ray Bradbury personally. He got interested in the interview. And when, it's, when it was finished and I closed off the segment, he turned to my wife and said, well, if it's good enough for Ray Bradbury, I guess your husband's uh, program is good enough for me. Wow. And so, uh, and so Chris, Christopher Lee stayed, and we did, I think we did three segments, uh, 10 minutes each. So if he had walked out on me, Priscilla, you can imagine the trauma that would have caused me. Oh how do I fill my, how do I fill my time uh, this evening? So those kind of things uh, can, uh, can happen. But uh, generally, you approach it, uh, you want to be as professional as you can, and, and you want it to be fun. Uh, like, uh, I'll give you an example. I joked with, about Edie Williams. Um, I, I discovered that if you catered to the ego of the individual, uh, you would often get a uh, response that far exceeded your best expectations. So I always, if, I, if a special guest was coming in, I would always write something special just for them that played off their characters that they played on television or in the movies, or just off their personality. And uh, for example, uh, Buddy Epson, uh, he played Barnaby Jones, a, a private detective. So uh, when he came to the when he came to the studio, I said, uh, 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 Mr. Epson, would you like to do a little bit of special material that we can use as a promotion? I, every week, I would make promotion uh, tapes, 
He said, sure, what is it? I said, well, I have here a handgun. It was a real handgun. I said, uh, I'm going to be standing over by the wall, and you're going to come up and say, all right, get your hands up. You're under arrest. <laughs> and I'm going to say, Barnaby Jones. And he's going to shake his head and say, no, Buddy Epson. And you are under arrest for posing as a TV host. Uh, so he, we, he really enjoyed doing that. With Edie Williams, she arrived angry because the uh, limousine driver had made a play for her. <laughs> she was, uh, uh, I think she was doing lap dances over at the Mitchell Brothers Theater. I don't know, I never got, she never invited me to come over there, but I think that's what she was doing in those days. Anyway, she arrived angry and wasn't going to do the show. Wow. In that fact, uh, by it, she huh? was so angry, she said, I'm going to go back to the, I'm going to get a cab and go back to the city. Oh my gosh. And she was shabbily dressed and uh, just nothing special. Wow. Um, so I said, well, wait a minute, uh, uh, Miss Williams, I've written some special material for you. She said, oh, what, what is that? You know, and so I handed it to her and she, you wrote this for me? Oh. Where can I change my clothes? She was, wow. carrying, she was carrying a little bag, you know? So uh, she changes, she comes back wearing this yellow dress, you know, short hemline, you know, well uh -huh. above the knee, uh, bodice cut low, and got her hair all glossied up, you know, and lipstick. <laughs> she's, uh, she's really a knockout. <laughs> and so uh, she stayed, we did these segments, you know, and she did this very sexual, <laughs> I mean, all I did was write the copy, then she interpreted it and added the sexuality to it, you know? And, and I, was uh, I was writing a spoof on myself that she was gonna talk about me as a host of the show and, and I was gonna introduce one of the segments, you know? And I'm not even on camera. <laughs> she did that so well, Priscilla, that that copy of that tape passed around the, uh, passed around the station to all the uh, advertising executives for weeks after that, everybody said, you got to see the Edie Williams segment that John did for, uh, wow. that she did on John's show for Creature Features. Wow. So uh, I found that all you had to do was uh, open the door a little bit to your guests, and they are there. They are more than willing to participate in the fun uh, of, of what you're trying to get across for the show. Wow. Wow. What an experience. Well, thank you so much. It's okay. always a pleasure. Uh, Priscilla, it's always great to talk to you. And I thank really do appreciate so uh, you plugging our new book. Oh, we're no try, problem. We're trying to reach the, the really hardcore creature feature fans such as yourself. Oh, they're has, out there. Who has those childhood Ooh. memories oh, they're of growing out up there. with the show in the San Francisco Bay Area yes. in the golden age of television. Yes, and it's it's just so interesting. I mean, so TV is completely different now, and when you have so much of something in such variety, it's just not cherished. It's just not you know. People back then, I mean, my family would plan our life around. Okay, well, we got to go back home because this is what we're watching. You know. That's right. You wouldn't do so, that today, would you? No. Uh, no. All you have to do is set your timer yeah. on your DVD, and you're all set. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for all the memories. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, this is my... War is looking at you, kid. <laughs> ...interview with John Stanley, and here is the book. May all your creatures be little ones. <laughs> yes. Thank you, John. Thank you. So, I tell you, she always...